Okay. Uh, click on the data source, set up data source, hmm. and that will give you this pop up. And then uh, you create the data source and save it to the data source uh, folder that is that you see here, the tab there. That is your first thing that you do when you create information. If the data source is already created, then you can skip that step. You can reuse the data source. Make sense? Hmm. Yes. Good. Next is creating the column element. Now, when you create a column element, you pull the, uh, you click the column, uh, create column element here, the I link here, and you get this pop-up. And on the left side, you have the data source tab. Let me, let me go over for the data source tab. Let me get, get a nice link for you, nice image. Modified data source. It would essentially look something like this. Only thing is here you're seeing the bit elements thing, but adding you will be looking at. See what? But uh, the problem is here you're seeing the elements tab. But instead you will be seeing the data source tab. I am not able to get find a data source uh, thing. So here you will be seeing the data source instead of elements. And then we will be selecting one of the uh, column from the data source and adding them. And that will show up here. That's you create a column element and you save the column element. And the co saved column element is what you see here on the left. See that? You mean the data source will include a lot of columns and you just add the columns into See this, yeah. see, see this, say you create the sales and the sales now shows here. See? Yeah. Okay, that's how you do it. And, but you know, uh, I'm not able to show you the data source tab here. Let me see. Let me Google one more time. Find out. Let me see if I can go right. Hmm. You know, it'll be easy for you to understand things. You know? Ah, yeah. I mean, see this? See? Hmm? This is the data source. Data source. This is how it would look like. 
we need to have a bigger picture. See that? You expand the table or you know, the schema and then you'll be able to see the columns inside. And that is from, from where you'll be adding the columns onto this. Okay, I'm talking about this one. This one. Mm. So you add the tape. Uh, See that? Create. Let me let me look for one more nice image. Ah, yeah. Right, got it. Okay. See, see the data source there? Mm. Oh, here. Yeah. See that data source is selected here. Inside of the data source. Yeah. yeah and yeah, from yeah. there you're selecting the data Sell. source and then adding, clicking on the add oh. button. And you select something, then click on the add button, okay. it just comes up here. And you save it. And this will go into the elements tab. Elements tab is what you've seen here. What do you mean it will go to element? It will, it will show up in the elements tab. Oh, after you add that? Yeah. Make sense? Okay. <clears throat> yeah, yeah, makes sense. Okay. Now, uh, so that was creating columns. Now we'll have to create uh, all the columns here, like that you see here. See this? All the columns like over that you show that you see here will have to be created like this. Select one column, add it, create a column name, give a column name, expression that you want, then save it, and add another one. And likewise, if you have hundred columns, you'll have to add hundred column elements. Make sense? Mm. Yeah. Okay, good. Next Choose is, the ones you want. Sorry? Right. Choose the columns you need. Yeah. That's right. And you know, you will be creating folders here. See this? You don't have any folders in data source, but you have folders in elements. You'll have to right click and create folders there. See, you see analysis, elements, filters, join, procedures, information links. You create these folders and that's where you save all these analysis. That's, that's where you save the DXP files. Elements is where you save the elements. And filters, that's where you save the filters. Filter elements, join elements, procedures, and information links. See that? We'll get to that one by one. So, uh, assuming that you have created all the co column elements there, next is, see these columns will be coming from different uh, tables, see? 
sales is coming from sales and cost table and state is coming from custom information. So there obviously will be joins involved in the data source, correct? Yes. So you have to create join elements within Spotfire to, to join these elements. Oh. So third will be Create the join elements. So let's see how to create the join elements. So you access this from here, see this, create join hmm. and that's when you yeah. get, get this uh, pop-up and there again okay. you will have to add the add from the data source tab. Add the join, add the columns from there and click the join condition. Where is the join? See this. I need to type here. It could be inner join, outer join or freehand join. Freehand join mm -hmm. is, is a complicated join wherein you add a lot of columns there and you say all these columns are related by one is to one ratio. You know, you see this, you have alias here, percentage one, percentage two. And in freehand join, you add, say, maybe four columns there, two columns from one table, two columns from another table, and you say percentage one equal to percentage three. See, freehand. Uh, suppose you have say percentage one equal to percentage three. And what does that mean? That, that the uh, alias, see this here? Yeah, what, what's the percentage one name? Percentage one is the alias for the column name. Ah. See, that's the alias there. Make sense? Uh, I, I don't know what is the alias. Alias. Oh, you don't know what alias? Alright. Okay. Uh, let's see alias. You know, see this. People. Alias. See this? You write a select query hmm. and then you put some name there as alias. See? Select customer name as custom. Change name. Yeah, change name. See? See that? See? You put customer there. Instead of I say customer one, 
that the display name will change as customer one. So you're putting in different name there, Elias name. Oh, okay. Okay. So that's the same thing that's happening mm. here. You're adding in, giving a new name, and the spot file automatically gives a new name there. Because there could be, again, uh, uh, two columns would be of the same name from two different tables. We need to uniquely identify them. That's why you have percentage one. In this case, we would have uh, said something like C, and then say C dot customer. You know. Okay, that is how it should work, but I don't know why it's not working here. So. All right, so we have interface here. All right, does it make sense? Uh, yeah, I think I need to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, see, you should be strong with SQL. You know? Should be strong with SQL. You need yeah. to brush up SQL. If you don't, uh, if you're not uh, working on SQL for some time, then you need to brush up SQL because SQL is very, very important. Yeah. Open and closing this. Uh, uh, so you create the join elements there. Mm -hmm. Mm. Join. Uh, Join between different tables. See, you're pulling data from multiple tables here in the data source. So uh, you will be pulling in region, you'll be pulling sales, you'll be pulling table data from some oh. other table. So you need join information, right? Otherwise, you, when you're getting data from multiple tables, you need to join those tables. SQL, again. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. So now you have three the join elements. Yeah, multiple data I mean you have multiple tables in the data source yes we have and then we'll have to uh, you know join create join information there you know to make sure that data is pulled mm -hmm. you know from the tables in the right manner otherwise you will get the data wrong Okay. Now you created L columns. You created uh, joins. Then you might need to filter some data. Okay. So there are two types of filters. One is hard filter and one is soft filter. We look at the soft filter first. I mean the program will filter so that that can be reused for other information links. Uh, and hard filter is just you know we we'll look later when you create information links.
there again you are adding the filter from the resource and you know you add a column there and then say sales okay sales when you add sales you have an alias there percentage one see that second column you add we have a alias of percentage two you follow the logic there percentage one means the first table first column means First column that you added there. Okay. So whatever you add on the column or filter, uh, you know, you will be able to immediately access in a text area below that as percentage one. It's an alias. Oh. See that? And you know, you have just added a, uh, uh, you know, this an element there. First column. Yeah. You just add an element yeah. there. And then you're putting some constraints saying sales should be less than 10,000. Okay. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. I see. Good. So now your sales will always be less than 10,000. So you do that by clicking on the create filter and you add this filter there. Okay. Hmm. And other things are optional, like uh, we can pull data from a procedure, those, those things are optional. Now we go back, now we go and create an information link. Mm -hmm. I have added this, you know, the thing was going on. You haven't created that information link. Hmm? Sorry? Oh, this is the last step. This is not the last step. This is the optional last step. We can go on and add things like prompts, parameters, edit SQL. You can do that. But, you know, ideally you would stop here. But, you know, you can go and make some modifications there later on. Okay. Now, Coming back. Okay. You click on the element there and then click add. Make sense? Add what? You add elements. You click first you click on the link here to add information link, create information link. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's okay. That's when you get this pop-up. Oh. Mm -hmm. And then you add the elements that you want to be in the uh, information link. It's basically you're building a query. If you click on the SQL button here, see this? You if you click on this you'll get a query saying select order date, select sale, uh, select order date sales, buyer, region, state, from table name 1, join table name 2, uh, where condition applied, and in the where condition, see this is a filter, see that higher than minimum sales, see this filter icon there? Yeah. So that's a filter, yeah. that will come up in the where clause. And it will not be retrieved, see this, on the retrieve panel everything is checked where except the filter which means it will not be filtered. It will not be retrieved in the columns list. It's just a filter there. Uh, you have, you have named, probably named this as uh, minimum sales. Got it? That's what is showing up here. Higher than minimum I sales. Yeah. Well, You're filtering. This part I don't... Oh, I'll say this again, no problem. I'll say that. Okay. Which one? Filter or... No, this part, I, I don't understand what, what to add into the element. I mean, all of that, you already added into the information link, right? No, no, you are creating an information steps. link. You, you, you remember the image that I've drawn here, see this? This is your information link. Yeah. And your column elements, joint elements, filter elements, 
and everything is your you know even the data source is a building block for information. Oh, before it's just create the filter and join and column. You you haven't created all of them into the information link. Correct. Now you are doing that. Correct. Oh, okay. Okay. So these are the. Make sense now, right? Yeah. Good. So you click on something, then you click add there. Click on the elements or click on the you expand the filter uh, folder and uh, add the filter that you created there and you know add that and that shows up here. And then you save the information link. But before you do that, you have to add the joins. See this? I've not added any joins here. I've just added the column elements there. See, and it shows the data type too. See, this is date time. This is uh, real. This is character. This is a filter element. Oh. And now we have just added the column elements to the information link. We need to add joins. So for that, this. Inside the information link, create when you create information link, your part one would be add column elements and filter elements. That is five one. Okay. Next is five two. You can just join, like add a join into the element. In the uh, sorry add what? into the information link. Sorry. Um, you, you can see. Um, see. I mean, you can't just add join elements like this. You have to add this here. This see this join path. See this join path here. Oh. Let me pull up the picture. I think we have it.
No pictures. Not able to find the join and all this stuff. Okay, I'll explain that otherwise. So you click on, you expand the join path. On the information link tab. So you click on suggest joins. Okay, this will automatically suggest. Add the join elements created that apply. That make a little sense. You know, it's a little difficult to understand with our image. Uh, trying to get an image. You expand this, okay? That's all I can say right now. You just have to expand this, and then you'll see a button that say it says suggest joins. And when you click suggest join, based on what are the columns which are already added, and all the joins that you already created, Spotfire will automatically add the joins necessary for building the query. Okay. Oh, yeah, 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 see this, yeah, all right, okay, I mean, I missed, missed this part. This one, okay. You need to click the suggest to join. Yeah. Or you can add manually using the add button. Oh. But who would want to add it manually when you have the suggest joins? Hmm. Next is save the information. You save it to information, save the information link. That is, like you create a folder somewhere on the, uh, on the same path and then you save it here, maybe. You know, see this. This is a user created folders. Okay. Save the in the information link. Well, I mean, that's a user created folder. You can create one on your own way. Which has got a different name, maybe say IL, and then create, save that there. Say so basically save it to a path which is accessible to you. Wait it. Oh, okay. All right. Now, uh, next, you know, now that you've created the information link, you can uh, use information link to uh, pull data into Spotfire. Next is. Do that by oh, 
phosphorus hung. Maybe open too many applications. This water didn't like it. Waiting, you know, you don't pay attention to it, so you didn't really like it. Go over the legal stuff. You know, you know, what for crashes all too often? It's not a big deal. This is something they're going to be getting. Yeah, like when when you open that, it takes some time. It's not about taking some time, it crashes often, so that's something that you're going to get used yeah. to. <laughs> Yeah, so we need to save it all the time. Yeah, that's right. See, it is connecting the spot for cloud. See, spot for dot cloud dot It's all indicating the cloud. That is the server's location. That is a server server location. We have a spot for cloud, which you can access for the thirty day trial during the thirty day trial. Okay. This is one way of adding library. Open from library or and data table Two ways of adding, right? From there, it's, it's the same, you know, as you add in Excel. Once you click that, you browse to the folder, and then you add that. 
information link. Mm. That's all you got to do. We can do that right now, you know. Just connect to data from library. See. The information link will save to here and you no, but we have not created information link, otherwise not, nothing is showing up. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's about uh, how you add, create information link and add uh, data table using information link. Then there are a lot of other things that you can do with the information link. Uh, you know, we can modify the SQL of the information link by clicking on the yeah, SQL. Now, when you create the information link, I mean, when you create the, the uh, DXP, this is how you uh, once you you can save it to. Analysis. You can save the analysis to the library. Let me open it. DXP. Sorry, let me open an analysis. There are a few more concepts like uh, data on demand, those things. We'll explain that later. I don't want to confuse you all the stuff. Right. Um, you save things to library like this. And then you can set permissions for the folder. Do this. You give access, browse plus access. A browse plus access plus modify for control. See, library administrator has a control. Uh, do that. Yeah. You don't have access, but you, know, you can act, uh, access that page there. You can do anything. But, oh. That's good. Library administration. Oh, you can add it here. Only the library, only the person who are designated as, who's designated as library, library administration can do this. You just access it. Right? So uh, these are the, some of the basic things which you can do with information link. There are more things remaining to be done, like editing the SQL, adding data on demand, 
um, adding prompts, adding parameters, those things which we can deal with next class. Otherwise, you know, uh, too much okay. information coming in. Yeah. Right. Tomorrow I need definitely to reveal this.